I'd, I realized that somebody had vandalized my property again. Hmm. They had torn up that sign out front, and they had torn up uh, two or three other items out there in my yard. And of course, I have been vandalized several different times since I've moved back there. And uh, I can't get I can't get nothing resolved because I'm dealing with people that are basically uh, insane. And the reason why that they're insane is because whenever you get out here and get boozed up and get doped up, your thinking is not right. And you know that to be a fact. And they get that courage water in them and that courage dope in them. And the next thing you know, they want to come down there and agitate and aggravate my life. Now your daughter, the one that does the hospital stuff, what's her name? Melinda? Yeah. She, she, she does the school. Okay, she does the schooling. The school nurse. She's the one. She's the one that's got James Henry. Yeah. Yeah. She has made gestures towards believing that what they're trying to do is drive me off into a heart attack. And I have thought the very exact same thing whenever Ridgeway was co so consistent. Because sometimes he would come out there seven, eight, ten times a day because he didn't have nothing to do with his life. And he was getting off on it. That was his way of making, putting a smile on his face and getting a good laugh. <laughs> I pissed him off. Just pure, nothing but meanness. Pure meanness. Yesterday was Christmas. And you, you know, you may can kind of halfway overlook Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving is really about the Indians making friends with the pilgrims. And that was a time set aside towards being thankful for having a good harvest that, that, that year. And it kind of brought everybody together, Thanksgiving. But you don't, you don't really expect for something idiotic to happen on Christmas Day. And it's exactly what happened again late yesterday evening, just about dark time, maybe a little after dark. They all come down there. They was on that razor, playing loud music, cussing, calling me every freaking name in the world. And they pulled up there once, and, and all they're doing is terrorizing my life. They're tormenting me. And this this is this is from the, the from the derivative of nothing but but hate mongering. There should be a, a hate charge uh, put on their lives because of what that they consistently do are doing out there. And I cannot get no type of justification or recourse out of the weekly county judicial system. And it's as if everybody is against Juby. Well, the thing about it is, Juby ain't knocking on their doors. Juby hadn't beat them on a car deal. Juby's not getting fresh with any of their wives. All this hate mongering that's going on out there is almost driven me to a state of bad health. And that's the very reason why David could not take it any longer. You know, it's kind of like joining up with the military. you got to be made out of the right stuff to go to the front lines and listen to bullets flying by your head, and you're shooting at the enemy, and the enemy's shooting at you, and you hear all these explosions, and at the end of the day, you go to the barracks, you brush yourself off, you take a quick shower and you jump 
and you caught and you have a good night and the next morning you do it all over again. It takes somebody to do that. You gotta have good nerves. You gotta be trained to do that. Well, it's the same way with the events that were going on because David had so many emotions trying to work, trying to put up with this, trying to, trying to deal with all them problems down there. It was too much for him to handle. Psychologically speaking, it was too much for him to handle. And they literally drove my younger brother off into an early death at the age of 51. Now, you may think I'm crazy for me even making gestures about the human mind and the human body being limited towards what we can or cannot do. But I guarantee you, all of us has our limitations. I don't care who we are. That's right. You can be Superman. And everybody has their limitations. And they're steadily provoking me, trying to bring my blood pressure up. They've already caused, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, whenever I first moved to Tennessee in 20 and 14, I didn't have diabetes. Or if I did, I didn't know it. I wasn't being treated for diabetes. And now I am. Now I'm being treated for diabetes, and it's a it's a uh, costly drug that probably, if I was paying for it out of pocket, would probably be about fifteen hundred dollars a month. Because now they got me on insulin shots, hmm. taking an insulin shot in the morning and taking an insulin shot in the afternoon, just to be able to maintain and keep my sugar level down. Because once your sugar level gets way, way too high, next thing you know, you'll lose your eyesight. The next thing you know, you'll have to have a, a finger or a toe cut off or, or possibly a, a foot amputated. I mean, diabetes can actually kill you. I know, man. I've got it. You've got it too? Oh, Lord, yeah, I've had it a long time. Are you just taking pills? Yeah. Well, see, you've, you've stayed within the guidelines and, and your body is still reacting to those pills and and mine done that for a while for a couple years pertaining to the pills but I guess because of the stress I don't know or, or maybe it's because of my weight I don't know I'm not a doctor so I can't give you a specific answer but I do know this that my diabetes got worse to the point that I had to start taking insulin shots but whenever I'm in in constant motion towards being agitated and aggravated on a occurrence after occurrence after occurrence, how can I get any kind of peace of mind out there? They don't want me to have no peace of mind. That's the whole game plan, is to keep him riled up, keep him agitated, and, and maybe uh, drive him off into a state of either bad health or maybe drive him off into a state that he winds up doing something idiotic towards trying to take the law into his own hands. And the next thing you know, I'll be spending the rest of my life in behind prison, in behind bars somewhere. That's right, that's right. Well, when did they do that? Bad, was you home? Christmas, yesterday. You were home? Yes. And they done it right there in broad open daylight? Well, it was starting to get dark. I mean, the dark time had done already fail. But they jumped out there like a bunch of heathens. And then they left on the four-wheeler and come back in a truck. And there was three or four of them in the back end of a truck and they was throwing out beer bottles or beer cans and boards and everything else towards uh, agitating and aggravating my life. And it's the Sheffields. It's the Sheffield. It's Donnie Ridgeway's bunch. I'm dealing with a gang of people out there that is messed up in the mind. And can't get the law to do nothing about it as far as the judge or as far as the judicial system. And I guess they're not going to be satisfied until somebody winds up with blood on the floor. And I guarantee you, if Mr. Bobby Jackson was still living throughout all this period of aggravation, somebody would have done already been put in a morgue. And you yourself aren't going to tolerate something that has went on now for going on five years. Five years, Mr. Melvin, that I've been back here. Whenever I come back here in 2014, I had no workly ideal that, that there was an occult. 
within a quarter of a mile of my house that had done set up a stronghold. I had no earthly idea that I was walking off into a dope bin, a drug bin. I had no earthly idea that all these people's feelings pertaining to all the animosity and hate mongering that was going on, I had no earthly idea that I was walking off into an entrapment like this. So what do I do? I'm looking for advice. Y'all got any suggestions? Nah, I don't know. I've never been through that road. What do I do? Only thing I can think. After you've hired attorneys and after, after you went to court and you tried to, to uh, get it resolved, and, and I'm going to tell you where it stems from. It stems from before I ever come back here in 2014, David had a major conflict with Mr. Ridgeway whenever, uh, right after Danny had died, right before Dad had died in 2010, in which I realized that was a long time ago. But it's kind of like the old saying, if you give somebody an inch, the next thing you know, they're going to try to take a mile. David took that event where they took him down on his own property and took his own gun and attempted to take his life. And when he took it up there to Tommy Moore, to the judge, he throwed it out pertaining to uh, att attempt to murder. And I don't know if it's something biased that the Jacksons has done, because as far as I know, I've never done nothing personally to any of those judges up in Wake County. And as far as I know, yeah, my older brother, he had a drinking problem pertaining to Danny. And of course, my father, he had post-traumatic stress syndrome. And you could, you know, you've even confessed to this. You never could tell with Bobby from one day to another toward what kind of mood he was going to be in. Rather than that, he was going to be your friend, shake your hand, or he's going to be loud and, and overbearing and, and couldn't control his anger management. But uh, Dad had a problem pertaining to what he had uh, acquired by being in World War II. But I really feel like that a lot of it's got to do more so with the sickness in the community because if those would have been good, upstanding people under the Good Samaritan law, somebody would have raised a red flag to that type of behavior towards abusing your children the way that he did back years ago. Now, people don't interfere with family matters much. Well, that's what's wrong with them. They think that you can beat them and, and mistreat them and rape them, and, and you got incest towards yeah. brothers having sex with their sisters and sisters having sex with their brothers. They're just a bunch of heathens. They just don't want to get involved. That's what the courts is for. That's why we pay them their salaries so that we won't have to take the law into our own hands. And David and I has tried, of course I can't get David now, I, I can't dig him up out of the grave, but we tried hiring attorneys and going to court and standing in front of the judges a numerous amount of times. And I couldn't tell you the amount of telephone calls that was made to the Weekly County Sheriff's Department. I'm pretty sure that if, if you stack all the paperwork up, one complaint after another, it'd probably be 65, 70, maybe 75 to 100 complaints. And that's per telephone call, per incident, and usually every time an incident occurred, there was either one cop car, and I have seen as many as five cop cars come out there. Five cop cars, do you realize what that's costing? The taxpayers of wearing out all them automobiles coming from Dresden, down to hop in, plus you got to pay the deputies, plus you're wearing out bearings and belts and everything else. When is enough going to be enough? When is somebody going to step in and say what is happening to this man's life is cruel and unhumane? Does not nobody have no backbone in hop in inside, don't you? Am I really at my? Am I really on my own? I, I don't know. I don't know half the people over there in the side of me. Uh, oh, and hopping over in there. 
I don't live in that community no more. I understand. And the people that was there when I was there, they're dead and gone. Sure, I understand. And somebody else has moved in there. I don't know. But but what do I do? I mean, I have well, put I, I have put this stuff on my Facebook and my uh, uh, YouTube platform, hoping that I would reach somebody out there that would be able to hear my testimony and identify what was going on in my life, and I have yet to get any help. How many times do you have to cry, woof, woof? How many times do you have to cry SOS? Well, you know as well as I know that if it would have been Tommy Moore's daughter, Tommy Moore's niece, Tommy Moore's cousin, Tommy Moore's whatever kinfolk, they would have put a stop to it a long, long time ago if they would have had Tommy Moore's the judge, the residing judge in Wheatland County. You know good and well that he would have set up either cameras, security cameras, or if he had to, he would have brought a deputy out there. Or if it had been happening to Mike Wilson, the cop that's been out there for 30-something years, uh, pertaining to one of his loved ones that was being tormented like this, and that's exactly what it is. It's torment. It's literal torment. And, and the thing about it is, you could maybe say, well, Dennis is a schizophrenic. And he's, he's just imagining all that stuff. No, not whenever you get it on your video camera and you put it on your YouTube platform. Not whenever you got a stack of paperwork that, that thick. Not whenever you've done already spent a couple grand plus they put a, a felony on my life pertaining to all the aggravation that I'm going through up there. This isn't my imagination. I'm not a schizophrenic. They're actually coming out there doing this almost routinely. When did they start? When did they start? The day that I moved in. Oh. You know that because they tr tried to cut my Social Security off. No, I don't know. They tried to cut my Social Security off. Hmm. Over some dogs. The Ridgeways. They need to be put away. And now it's bled down to the Sheffields. In other words, the main instigator, he's died. Well, is it the kids or is it the wrong people? Or? It's all of them down there. It's a gang. It's a gang of them. And they're on dope. They get all boozed up and get all, you know, get that courage water in them. And then come down there and want to raise cane. Civilized people don't act this way in other parts of the country. If they do, a judge or a prosecuting attorney or somebody will put the put the finger down and stop it. Now it'd been different if if all these incidences was happening up there where they're living. But guess what? None of them are happening up there. They're all happening at 291 Thompson Road. And it was happening at 430 Beach Grove Road and 291 until David died. They don't like me because I've come back into that area. And they're thinking that they're going to run me out. And I'm going to cow down like a dog with his tail tucked between his legs. i got news for all of y'all, everybody. I'm going to be just like David. The only way I'm going to leave my property is in a black body bag. Now, if they've got the yin yangs to come onto my property and take my life, bring it on. Because as far as I'm concerned, what's happening to my life right now, I would actually be better off dead. Going through all this emotional suffering and, and cruel uh, being tormented. They're hunting me. They're agitating me. And I can't get the judicial system in the area to do nothing about it. They all laugh about it. And they're all getting their jollies off about it. You tell me this ain't a cruel society that we're living in. I just got through meeting right down here by the lake. Coming from Union City, three sheriff's cars. I don't know whose house that they was at. I don't know if they was down in Hopbit. I don't know if they was over here or over there in O'Brien County. But there was three of them coming from somewhere, and they was shagging it, too, back, back to Union City. Hmm. So they must have had some sort of a disturbance somewhere. Well, there's one cop lived over there somewhere. No, there was three. Yeah, but I mean one. There is a cop that There was an unmarked... There was unmarked... Sheriff's car, 
and then there was two marked up cars together going into Reeds are heading in that direction, heading back toward Union City. They used to be going to live up there somewhere. Huh? Huh? They wanted to live up at Crockett. But I think it's yeah, uh, sheriff car down there. Down there. What, I'm, what I'm getting at, there's commotions everywhere. Yeah, it is. Everywhere. Oh, yeah. It, it get, get worse, worse all of it. And, and if the judicial system, if, if the law enforcement cannot put a stop to this, they're going to take us all over. Do you not understand that? I mean, the very thing that's happening in my life, it's just a matter of time before it's going to be happening in the office. And it's probably, it and it's probably a thousand wonders that it hadn't already. The only reason why is because y'all are kind of grounded in here and you've lived here all your lives and because of your age, they probably, they probably have a little bit of uh, decency or respect towards you, towards not agitating and aggravating you. But if they ever feel like that, that you're being boisterous or you're standing out above with your, with your philosophies or your ideologies, oh, they'll come after you. You just want to put a, 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 some sort of a, a mark on your back because you become a target. I think y'all know the type of torment that I've been going through. Well, I thought he would fell down if he died. Yep. It's not as it's not as abundant as what it was since he died. In other words, whenever he was living, I'd liable to have to go through something like this three or four times, maybe five or six times a day, of him coming by the house and just laying down on a horn. And and he even got the word that he would add horns to to his vehicles to make the vehicle that much more louder. And just just deliberately trying to uh, terrorize my life on a day-to-day, everyday level whenever he was living. And now, now they're doing it. Like father, like son. Like mother, like daughter. The people are possessed. They need to go through some sort of a, a spiritual ritual towards an exorcism or something. But once more, how can I do anything at all either in advising or, or demanding if you can't get the support from the law enforcement community to get in behind you? Pertaining to the judge and pertaining to the probation officers and pertaining to the people that's in charge of the courthouse. Well, they're not going to be satisfied until, until there's blood on the floor. I've already seen that. It's like they're deliberately wanting that to happen. And I have said that all along, and just like your daughter, uh, Megan mentioned Jimmy, I really think they're trying to force you into a heart attack because whenever, whenever I get all upset like this at my age and at my weight, I'm liable to end up having a heart attack. Because I get so emotional, you know? My nerves. I get so emotional about it. Because I knew what was going on with David's death, and I knew how that the law enforcement in community turned their back on me up there in Dresden and Mark. So I mean, it, it's almost like I'm doomed. Doomed. It looks like they've got a lot of courage for them to come there and. Uh, they, they don't have no sense. Where are you there, and then they know you there, and. Then, Start turning your property up. That's pretty bad. They don't have no sense. You, did you saw them tearing it up? Yes. They get out there and do donuts or or chunk uh, uh, eggs at our property or 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 tear up the yard or whatever. Yes, I got them on video this time. But I guarantee you, Tommy Moore of the judicial system up there in Dresden probably ain't gonna do nothing about it. It's become a mockery. It's called derelition of duty. The people aren't doing what the taxpayers pay them to do. And it doesn't matter if it's Juby. It doesn't matter if it's you. It doesn't matter if it's you. It doesn't matter if it's Danny D. It doesn't matter if it's the richest man in the county or the poorest person in the county. You're not supposed to have to go through stuff like this. And like I said, it would be different if I was bringing it on. 
it would be different if I was going over there to their property. Yeah. I guarantee you, if I was a Mexican with a family, somebody would have done already been laid out in a horror. Because I'm dealing with a gang. And I don't know if you realize it or not, but there's gangs in Owyhee County. There's gangs in Weekly County. And, and, and whenever I say they're gangs, whenever the bubble burst happened in 2008, 2009, whenever young Bush had to borrow $775 trillion out of the Treasury Department to bail out General Motors Ford and all those other major companies, including the banking industry. Whenever that happened, since 2008, the economy has slid way downhill, okay? And it's worse in some places than it is others. Well, you know as well as I do, the majority of the factories around here have closed up. They have closed up in Kenton, they've closed up in Rutherford, they've closed up in Greenfield, uh, they've closed up in Union City, they've closed up everywhere. I mean, there ain't nothing but empty holes. It's, it's almost like tombstones that's scattered all over the countryside pertaining to how all the work went south. Well, guess what they're relying upon to their major income now? Drugs. Black market. Just like it was back in the 20s and the 30s pertaining to the moonshine. They've exchanged their livelihood for making moonshine now dealing in drugs. Well, let me tell you something else. It's the class of people that they go to work. They'll steal before they work. Sure they will. And lie? Yeah, they will. I mean... Lie to you and steal from you. Some of the most worthless human beings that's ever walked the planet right now. I'm talking about as worthless as a boar hog with tits. It, they're people that don't work. It's more handed out. That's the, the, the people that hope these people like that and all they know to do, they're raised up that way and they're going to still be that way. Yeah. They're not going to work day one. Yeah. They'll and, steal. And, and, the reason, and the reason why I think, because a lot of it is because this government has been over backwards to give the farm away towards keeping everybody sufficed here in America. You know, back, back, yeah. back 45, 50 years ago, um, whenever a woman, you know, got pregnant, she was looked down upon in the community. She was looked down upon because she didn't have a husband. Hey. Today, hey, today, hey, hey. you've got all these amenities. You've got all these programs to where nowadays it's actually more beneficial for the woman not to be married because of all the, the amenities out there for her whenever she's out here raising kids by herself. Well, you know now... Back a long time ago, if a man and his wife and a woman lived together, they'd throw him out of church. I mean, he, he wouldn't be going to church, you know? That's right. Yeah, well, they'd bring him to church and everything else. I mean, they don't pay on to that. That's a plain going now. They don't marry, they just check up. Yeah, yeah, over Oh, man. Yeah, and have, and have children out of wedlock. Yeah, and all these children out of wedlock. Then they'll have the. Then they won't. Uh, you know, I know. I've heard colored people say, so, well, we can have a kid and we don't have to work. They they, they ought to find the daddy. They ought to put that check on them. I mean, you know, uh, well, that test on them too is the daddy. I guarantee you, you can go to Memphis right now or the bigger cities and you'll find families, generations, probably three or four generations prior to where we are now that has solely been raised up on food stamps and welfare. Yeah. Food stamps and welfare. You'd be surprised. And once you spoil people like that, then they begin to start expecting it. You know, whenever you have all these foreigners come over here that hasn't never worked a huh? day in their Where's life. Where the kids are? They, I guess they're home. <laughs> hadn't never worked a day in their life, and just because they step foot on American soil, now all of a sudden they're entitled to all the amenities and all the insurance and all the welfare and all the retirement, just like if they've lived here all their lives. That ain't right neither, is it? 
No. It ain't right. Well, if, I tell you what, though, if you didn't get some of these migrators to come over here and work, you couldn't get a lot of your stuff done. You know what? Because if there's five people, ain't going to work no more. I'm telling you, they're lazy. Yeah. They're, they're we not them, they're not we had them cabbage down there cutting. Why, well, they want to cut cabbage. We started cutting cabbage, and they, they quit. Oh, they cut the finger, and then, oh, they was tired. They got to give out. I told Ron, I said, it's the biggest thing I ever seen in my life. Whenever I was a kid, I didn't know what my back was hurting. I just kept on going. Sure. I said, now then they won't do nothing. They so don't. We, we finally get them Mexicans up here. We couldn't even get a one trailer truck over a day cut with these local people around here. And whenever we got the Mexicans, we could cut three trailer truck loads a day. Right. Well, if we hadn't got them, what would we have done? Do we? I know. I mean, we, we, I they, we couldn't cut them out. People uh, just ain't going to work no more. I'm telling you, it's a dope, dope has ruined America, hasn't it? I don't want to dope them. No, it's, it's, a, it's a handout. It's hard, it? The government is what done it. They give to them. Yeah. That's what's happened to them. They ain't going to work. They, they'll find a way to do it, I guarantee you. They, 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 you they just, don't get this... Uh, Color your face and you get more if you color your face and you will be white. Try to get food stamps and all that. Well, if they don't make it, they tell them what they got to do. Or, and right there in that office, they say, well, you you got to do this or you had to do that or get brain there or whatever. Well, they'll go home and get everything they done told them they needed and they'll go right back there to get them. I don't know what the world is. Well, it it's ain't the world, it's the have. people, ain't it? They wouldn't get them. You'd be surprised at stuff that we get here through mail is wanting you to help them. But ever, or, we get something about four Christmas, we get stuff every day. Not only that, them. but you get them robo calls and people oh, wanting yeah. to join this. And yeah, then but, the next thing you know, they'll threaten you and say, well, we got your social security number <laughs> and we're going to turn you into the IRS and, the, and, and, and just all okay. kinds of scams. They're going to come and arrest me. They're going to send an officer out here and arrest me. <laughs> Me but I mean, it, was it a scam? Sure, it was. Yeah. I ain't done nothing to be arrested for. <laughs> yeah, they called him, and, uh, and he was so dumb, he didn't know to leave the. Uh, you gotta wait for the beep on the answer machine. Right. Well, I wasn't here the first time, so he left the message, but I didn't get the proof of it because he didn't wait for the beep. I got you. And then I just got the. The last part and said, uh, if you don't call this number back in a certain time or whatever, I'm sending a police officer out there with a, those kind of warrant, and uh, they're going to take you to jail. I thought, well, they can just take me to jail. Then I never. So I called hey, the sheriff's what? office. I thought, well, I, I think I will report this. Did so you? I, yeah, I did. I Good. Called and told the sheriff. Good. And she said, well, we've had the uh, calls. Ooh, was up my leg. I said, we ain't had one like this. I said, well, that's what she told me. Well, wasn't long. The guy called back. And then he was going over all this freaking road, and they had my social security number and all this crap. And I, anyway, he said they was going to send the sheriff, you know, and everything. They ain't never come. And the whole time it was just a, a, fr a fraudulent call. Yeah, yeah. Wanting to try to get some money out of you or wanting to get your... Social Security yeah. number, yeah. your number, and, and if they can ever get your I identification, next thing you know, somebody else will turn into you over in in a in an island on an island somewhere and be using your identity, and the next thing you know, you lose your credit status exactly. because of somebody else that's using your name and your Social mm -hmm. Security number. Yeah. But I don't give out nothing. How can we control this? That's the question I get got. Your gun and shoot. Well, you know, if if we was back in the in the early days, that's how they handled things, and that's like I was telling him. If we don't do something, the 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 uh, the bandits, the the outlaws, are going to take the good people completely over. They almost already have. You know, I can't keep them thinking. Uh, they don't want Way back years ago, when dope first come, you first heard anything about dope? You know what brought dope over here? The Vietnam War. But anyway. The Sam, Vietnam War brought it over here. Sam Where? Brooks was our Sunday school teacher. Okay. I did a whip get this. I thought he was silly. Anyway, 
he, uh, I don't know how he was on, got off on dope and all that stuff. Right. At that time. I like Sam. Well, he, he passed away. You know? I know. And, anyway, and his brother did too, about a month after he died. Yeah, he did. And uh, he said in that Sunday school lesson, I think this dope will be the destruction of America, of the country, of the world. Well, let me ask you this. Do so you, I think he's going to be right. Do you, I never forgot that. Do you remember Gorbachev that had that, uh, the president of Russia that had that spot on top of yeah. his head? It was uh, supposed to be like a birthmark or something. Yeah. The prime minister before him, or the president before him, was Brezhnev. He was big, bulky, had a big wall, big, big dark voice. I remember but, them names. But, but, I but what, I'm, what I'm saying is, he made a comment that they'll take America over eventually and never fire a shot. Well, they probably will. What do you think that they was thinking about whenever he made that statement? That was after World War II that he made that statement. I don't know. They're thinking about contaminating us with all these drugs and bringing all this stuff over here. That's what they was thinking about. It's got to be. And they have literally almost ruined us. They'll be sending all those missile things over here one of these days, too. Sure they will. They'll take us completely over. It ain't going to be many days, don't And it? the next thing you know, we'll be slaves to a completely different alliance. In other words, they'll drop old glory down, the red, white, and blue, and they'll raise whatever flag that they want to raise up the pole, and we'll have to submit to their constitution. We'll have to submit to their way. We'll basically become slaves again like it was before the Revenue Revolutionary War. And I guess probably the only reason why that that hadn't already occurred is because of the NRA. There are so many people with guns over here in America. But that's become an oxymoron to the point that now we're using the guns on each other. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're turning on each other. Right, killing ever going on every night. Killing going on everywhere. Everybody. There was one. There was one uh, happened up up here, at Martin. Did you hear about that one? Night before last, Christmas Eve night. I heard something bad. I didn't hear it all. Somebody knocked on the door and nobody answered. Knocked on another door and nobody answered. So finally, he knocked on another door, and the person that opened the door, the dude shot him, thinking that he had drugs. Think about it is the guy that he shot. Didn't have nothing to do with drugs. He shot the wrong person. He shot an innocent person over drug money. We well, didn't care. You can't tell me that this stuff hasn't opened up a brand new threshold for Satan to walk in and destroy lives. And it's not just their lives that Satan is destroying but anybody's life around that person that's affected with this type of contamination, this type of disease. And you have to look at it the same way as you look at the bubonic plague or, or uh, some other type of disease. We're, we're under bondage right now because of all this. All the jails is full. There's 2.3 million incarcerated uh, prisoners either in federal or state or local jails. We can't build buildings quick enough to stuff them off into we might start putting them in electric chairs. That's exactly right. And you know we got a president now that don't believe in that? I, I mean, a uh, governor, Bill Lee. What's his name? Lee, you know, Lee. governor we got. I didn't know that. You know, in the paper, he don't, his religion, he don't believe that, uh, executing people. So he don't believe in capital punishment? Mm -hmm. no. well, he never would make it down there in Texas, then, with all those wild Mexican well, coyotes. Because that's the only reason why that they have maintained any type of law and order in Texas was because of their stiff penalties that if you mess up, you're going to get the lecture chair. Well, that's what's going to have to happen in Tennessee and everywhere else, you know? Yes, sir. Well, they get better treatment after they get in jail than they do outside. A lot of them do. Get fed and get a bed to sleep in. They have connections playing. in there. They, they get dope while they're in there. They, yeah. they, they get free TV, free cot, free room and board. I mean, yeah, they're confined. They're confined in a cell, but ordinarily you can get in there and you can get education. You get good education while you're in jail. You get fed good. 
you get taken care of. You know, they killed one here a while back. I'm going to put him electric chair up here at Niceville, where they electrocuted him at. He's been on the death row for 30 years. 30? 30, yeah. And then finally it killed him. Good God. And look how long many dollars that took for taxpayers to pay that guy to be in there for 30 years. Good that, God. That, it is. I mean, that's what it was. I come out in the paper on there. That, 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 30 that. years. He's been paroled. And finally it get electric chair. I feel like everybody deserves a fair trial. And everybody deserves a speedy trial. There's nothing wrong with that. That that law is a good law. But to go in and appeal and appeal and keep appealing and appeal and appeal and appeal and appeal, they'll go through something like 25, 30 appeals, and it takes like a year every time you appeal before you go back up in front of the judge again. Yeah. I think you should only be allowed to appeal one time. And if the evidence is substantial that you are guilty without a shadow of a doubt, that one appeal should be the only appeal that you should get. Yeah, that's exactly right. You either get out or you take the chair of one. That's it. And I hate to be brutal, and a lot of these lawyers is what's, what's uh, contaminated our way of thinking over here because they, they, they uh, holler out, well, that's unhumane. That's unhumane. Well, I got news for their unhumaneness. The state of Kentucky just announced last week I don't know if y'all caught wind of it. But it's now costing the state of Kentucky more to house their inmates than it is to run the whole state of Kentucky, beginning with the governor, the lieutenant governor, the assistant governor, all the way down to the judges and the sheriff and everybody that works in behind uh, the, 